Tavares, right in the butt. What? Ah! No. Ah! There, there's no way they would put that on national TV. Why would he say something like that, bro? Literally, like, they, there's no way they would put that on national TV, bro. <laughs> and that's pretty good. <laughs> you know, two 10-year-olds uh, horse playing around and tripping each other up like that might just result in maybe a elbow scratch, maybe a knee scratch. Ain't not, you might need a Band-Aid. Two 80-year-olds tripping each other up that might just be the last time they ever fell. Hate to say it, but uh, the bones and everything ain't the same at that age. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Having a photo shoot in the middle of the driveway where people go to park their cars is crazy. It's like seeing that in real life is weird, bro. That's basically what I'm saying. On social media, seeing a picture or a video of them to posing for that is normal. But when you see what they gotta do to get in order to get that on social media, you see how weird it is. Can you can you see me? Yeah. Can you see her? Peter. Hi. Peter, I'm cold. Why are you cold? Because I'm wearing Not nothing. Much. Well, you're wearing something. I mean, this is an outfit, isn't it? This is minimalistic. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing swim week? Oh, Want me to tell them like to turn the heat up? Yes. Okay, it's so like, do we do we know who to t ask to turn the... Know. This is a big space, and, and I need heat, please. You need heat. What amazes me is that when women walk out the house a certain way, that's little revealing or whatever, they come out the house looking like that, then they look like they're uncomfortable for wearing what they're wearing. They look like they're uncomfortable for being so revealing. For example, Women who walk around without bras. And then they be doing stuff like covering this and doing it. They be looking so uncomfortable. We're like, you're the one who walked out the house without a bra. You. 20 women versus Quavo. Yeah, what's on? Nah, baby. Is it real? Yeah. Let me see. Make it do something real quick. Now, what's happening? Round of applause. That's it right there. Good. Let's rate your box, one through ten. A that ten, box. of course. Any grip. Nah, we're going to ask you another question on the next round. Okay. We'll holler at you. Mm. Oh, this dude. Okay, I got one for you. When the last time you had sex? Yeah. Where? Okay, two weeks ago. Like, tight, yeah. Nah, two weeks ago and I heard yesterday, so. They don't even know me. I'm trying to be honest. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? She can stay because it's like. Thanks. It's still fresh a little bit. What's the wildest thing you ever did in public? The wildest thing I ever did in public? Say in public. Where? What's the wildest one? Um, really just like the parking lot. Nothing extra. Little parking lot flex. Yeah, some calm. Nah, we ain't having calm sex in the parking lot. We ain't fucking with it. We like it, we like it you know what I'm saying? We gonna fog up the windows. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> shit, the car got the shape, bust the back tie. What is your uh, favorite position? Um, I'm not gonna lie. I like missionary, but I also like to ride. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Just cause we gotta, you know, slim down to the, we gonna say no, we gonna pull it back up. We might pull it back up later though. <laughs> Have you ever cheated on somebody? No. I don't cheat. Aries don't cheat. Come on now. No, she can't pass it. <laughs> Somebody, somebody <laughs> What's the most toxic thing you ever done? Probably I was asking it like the baby mama was calling and I was just like what she want So he went answer the phone so I called her I seen the number and I called her and I was like hey So what's up what you want real quick like you mm -hmm. can call him back to back That was like the most toxic thing She lying I'm not that's like the most toxic thing I ain't really toxic I be chilling for real for real Nah but you, you lying I know you lying Am I lying? I think so Bro that was so smart in the climate of this cancel culture that we live in today he figured out a way to not get canceled because most of the other rappers, when they go up there, they reject them based on looks. That's what he was doing. He had his phone out acting like he was rejecting them based on if they qualified by how they answered the questions. He was looking at them and he was using that as an excuse to say no to the ones he didn't want and say yes to the ones he wanted. That was smart, bro. They bullshit, bro. In 2024, can y'all please do me a favor and stop going on these types of shows and embarrassing yourself? I'm talking particularly to the men. Women, too, but mainly the men. Like, please, I can't take it anymore, bro. Like, you got to be a perfect-looking dude in order for them to not pop that balloon. Didn't I just say that's my girl? Oh, my hey! Hey! Didn't I just tell hey! you? Hey! Didn't I just tell you? Didn't I just tell you? You know, some of them been acting like dudes for so long 
that I literally think they that, that they forget that they're actually not a dude, that they're still a female. Somebody in the comments said, now if he would have gave her a falcon punch, he would have been in the wrong, huh? And the truth is, yeah, he would have been. You know what I mean? Based on the law. Y'all, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to hold you, bro. If I pull up to the gas station, I see a whole bunch of men up at the gas station. I don't care how old they is. I will sit in my car until they all leave. I will sit in my car until they all leave. I'm telling you, I'm not playing. Because what is y'all doing up here? Then I, I've been sitting at the gas station for four minutes. What is you doing inside the gas station? Three don't walk out. It's still three in here. What is y'all doing? What is y'all doing? Get y'all shit and go. It's too scary being a woman at night. I don't play that. Because I'm rude when it comes to me, especially at the gas station. Don't say nothing to me. Don't talk to me. And you say something to me, I have a rude response. When you talk to me, I have a rude response. Don't even think you can talk to me. And it's too dangerous out here for females. So I'd rather just avoid the whole situation and sit in my car until y'all done. But why y'all still in this gas station? You not buying nothing. Then you got a backpack on. What is you doing in here? How three walk out? It's still three in there. Like, what's going on? I know I'm not tripping. And I, I know I'm just paying at the pump. I got a credit card and I just a debit card. So I can pay at the pump. But I wanted some water too. And it looked like I ain't finna get no water. Like I'm finna just pay at the pump and go. I mean, I don't know why you're complaining to us. You should have prepared ahead of time, bro. You know, if you know, and, and she's saying some, some valid things. You know what I'm saying? As a woman, you do have to be mindful, which is very, very true. I tell my sisters that. I'm mindful. I, I tell my wife that. Like, don't be going out at night to no gas stations. All the, all the women in my life that I love, I tell them that. So plan ahead of time. You know, since you know that that's a factor that you have to consider, plan ahead of time and get your gas for your car earlier while it's bright outside when you, when you feel more safe. situations but at the same time people in the comments are like you're streaming and recording everybody and they don't even know I, I, maybe phones in the gym just need to be just banned in general bro you know what I'm saying like but that was weird like him walking by and recording like that that was very weird actually excuse me excuse me bro basketball or football I'm going to take, honestly, what, to watch or to play? Hey, whoever moves first is gay, starting now. You know, I wasn't willing to sit there and see how long he was going to stand there to make sure he was not gay, but one thing we know about him is he does not want to be gay. No matter what it takes. <laughs> no matter what it takes, he is not going to be gay. <laughs> They're playing rap music at Whataburger on a Saturday night. It's just unprofessional. I should have got my food to go. How are you guys going to share this video? And tell me I'm wrong. But I know rap music. When I hear rap music, and watch her burger is not the place for that rap music. It's a place for family and professionalism. That's all I want to say. You heard the man turn that rap music off. Turn it off. 
It's messing up the professionalism. <laughs> Bro. We got it so good in America sometimes, especially certain groups of people, if you know what I mean, that people just find things to complain about. Some people in the comments was like, you can still get your food to go. Y'all, I'm at this place where they just let you pick your own strawberries, bro. You get charged for how much you pick, so just get done. Just get done and go, okay. Thank you so much, man. Good experience, man. Let's, let's try it. Let's pick strawberries. Nigga, I'm finna go and pick strawberries. Y'all niggas, you have to do something. Y'all niggas would be sitting in the house all fucking day, depressed, wanna look at social media, keeping up. Bro, you was just having a good time. How did it turn into that, bro? My man just started, he just started arguing with us. My man just started, like, giving us a lecture, like, like, like we got in trouble for something. How you know what we doing, bro? Dang, bro, my, my man just literally, everything was going so well. And then he just turned on, he just turned on us and started assuming we all don't pick strawberries, too. Window is totally different. It's public property. So if you want to take this to a lawyer, then by all means, I don't care. Go take it to a lawyer, okay? No crime has been committed. You guys need to get out of here. You can go in your car. You can go in your car. You can get your groceries, and we can stop this. Whole I thing. need his phone number because I am going to talk to him. I will give you my phone number. There you go. If he wants to give your phone number, then he can't. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I mean, I really don't want to, but I'll give it to you for the sake of look, we live in the same place. If we can't have good energy here, that's a bad thing. I know you from Adam. You just bought here from Massachusetts or wherever you're from, Maryland. You, I've lived here 15 years. Okay. You're a newbie here. I just, yeah, I moved here a <laughs> few months ago. <laughs> we I need your phone number. Being a newbie has nothing to do with this. So you don't need a judgment. I that. need I need a phone number. So if I can he wants to give you your phone number, he can. not yeah. he doesn't, then he doesn't. What is it? So I can tomorrow. 1-800, up your butt. <laughs> oh, that's perfect, bro. That's perfect, bro. That gotta be, I don't know, that gotta be in Florida somewhere because the Karens in Florida are built different, bro. There's probably more Karens per woman in Florida than there are there than, than there is anywhere in the whole entire world. And you won't know that until you live in Florida and you've been in different areas. It's like, it's like they got Karen schools. It's like, it's like people are trained to be professional Karens. Everywhere you go, every block, every corner you turn, there is a Karen waiting for you, especially if you don't look like them. But if you look like them, they still be kidding. Look, the guy, I'm assuming, look just like her. I told a guy that I was waiting till marriage. It was our fifth date. Um, we were trying to decide if we wanted to be exclusive or not. And expectations and what that would look like. And we talked about it for, we talked about my waiting for marriage for about um, an hour. And he had a lot of questions. And I was like, trying to answer them to the best of my ability and explain where I'm coming from and why it's important to me. He was really nice about it, like, just a gentleman, just wanting to understand. And I told him, I know that this is a lot to take in, and I want you to be able to make the best decision for you, so please, you know, take a couple days, think about it, don't think about my emotions, just think about what you need in a relationship, and then give me a call back in a couple days um, and just let me know what you've decided. And I'm waiting, I've been waiting for the phone call all day and I'm like, like I know that it'll be good either way. Like this is just how it is. Like, you know, if I'm gonna choose to like set myself apart in Christ, then this is what dating looks like. But, it just feels kind of bad to be waiting for his phone call, like waiting to see like, am I worth dating if I don't have sex? And I'm like, he hasn't called yet and it's 8 p.m. And so I'm like, well, maybe he's not calling because he'll show up to my place with flowers and tell me that that's not why he was interested in me and that he wants to be in a relationship with me either way and that I'm worth it. Um, but is that unrealistic? You know, like wanting like a, I don't know. I think I just wish that I was worth a big gesture because right now I don't even know if I'm worth a phone call. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you because I've seen this <clears throat> I've seen this mistake happen so many times with Christian women, being a Christian man myself. 
There's a, there are plenty of Christian men in the church who have the same values as you. And you're asking a man to respect your belief system and the way that you go about, uh, you know, uh, the way that you go about certain things. And the guy is most likely not even a Christian. Why are you picking a man that doesn't have the same value system as you? Why are you even considering or dating a guy who doesn't have the same value system as you? If you were dating a Christian man, and Christian men are supposed to know what I'm talking about. I know there's Christians who don't follow the, the, the way that we're supposed to be. But I'm saying Christian to Christian men who know that they're they supposed to be doing right. It's not even a discussion. It's it's You already know it on the first date that y'all are going to be celibate until marriage. So why are you even considering that guy? And then you got the whole internet trying to feel sorry for you. Why are you spending time with that guy? But y'all know what the crazy part about this. If we, the black people, was to stop shopping with these motherfuckers, they would be nothing. Let me tell you something about black folk. Baby, we buy shit. When we brace yourself, I'm about to state an unpopular opinion. You may not agree, but that's not the point. I just think this is a perspective that not a lot of people are talking about with regards to the Eben controversy. If you haven't heard about it, essentially, Eben is a brand owned by non-black people, predominantly Korean folk, and they market to black people. And uh, TikTok went viral recently about the one black employee they had and how they treated her really poorly. Honestly, to be completely honest, it frustrates me that anyone is surprised. I mean, really? A brand that's been around since 2014, it's been around for 10 years, and only now decided to employ a black person, and you're surprised they treated them poorly. A brand that distributes through beauty supply stores where the staff follow us around like criminals. Despite catering specifically to our demographic, they treat our demographic extremely poorly. I mean, this, none of this is new. And then when stories like this one come up, which obviously is, are really sad to hear, everybody gets really upset about it. But like, why weren't you upset yesterday? We knew this already. Like we, this is not news. Saddest thing is this is probably not going to change anything. And I know she says us as black people, we buy stuff. It's really the women consumers of our community. But women in general are the biggest consumers from what I understand. Right. So the women consumers of my community specifically, they're going to buy that hair. They're going to buy that weave. They're going to buy them lashes. They're going to buy all them products that's from them. They're going to keep buying. It doesn't matter. I don't think we'll ever come together as a community, women in particular, and take over that market because y'all could if y'all really wanted to. If y'all if y'all just applied yourself and was creative enough. But y'all like the convenience of them being in every single corner store and every single hood. And y'all just want y'all hair right now. Y'all want y'all Brazilian hair right now. Whatever hair, eyelashes, different hair products, wigs. And I'm going to be so real with you. I'm not one of the girls that's going to pretend like I don't want you to buy me stuff. I don't know why women pretend like, or I don't know what the case may be, if they're serious or whatever the case may be. I'm not one of them, though. So if you don't see yourself spending money on me, then you have no business liking me. Like, no business. None at all. No female these days act like they don't want you to buy them stuff. What are you talking about? You're just saying the same thing everybody else says, but no female thinks like that. Every black, not every black, most black women, as far as the culture is concerned, is going to ask you to spend money on them. All women want you to spend money on them, but black women are very direct, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, don't get me wrong, there is a big difference, but... She gained a considerable amount of weight. So is it that she worked out or did she just gained a lot of weight? They're enjoying life. They're having a good fucking time. What do y'all got to say to both of your exes right now that they see you enjoying life and living comfortable? <laughs> fuck you, unblock me. I miss you. Uh, fuck you. I don't want to talk to you, but I still love you. It's all love. Fuck you, though. <laughs> unblock me, please. We can go again. Come on, it could be a soft No, but for real though, she wants she wants him back. Please, she wants him back. How bad? How bad you want him back? Bro, please, bro, please. You want me to cry on camera right now? You won't cry on camera. Bro, please. You won't cry on camera. Don't make me think about it too hard. I will. You know, by the looks of it, it looked like they just met thirty minutes ago. They both drunk out of the club. That's understandable. But my thing is, nobody else understands that con that context. If that even even is true. If you want to, I don't care how you feel about your ex or whatever, but don't embarrass me on camera. I mean, dang, like, shoot, man, I, I ain't asked for that, bro. Like, like if that was me, I would have walked away immediately. I'm not going to allow you to continue to make me look crazy on camera 
over and over again while you beg for your ex to come back in your life. Like, I'm walking away. Who is it? Who is my it? Kids, my kids no, were like, no way. So no. let me. Who is it? DG Yeah. Right? Strong? Yeah. Oh, you wanna? <laughs> Come on, take the DDG down. Alright, I was Take the DDG down. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Come on. I'll do it for my blog. Take it. Put the on. I thought she really knew it. Thank you. Put the chat on you. What the fuck? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> now on. yes? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry. If I'm with my woman and she sees some social media guy, some YouTuber, some celebrity, and she is that excited to take a picture with him, even though she took a picture with the wrong guy. Well, she's even crazy within herself, but if she's that excited to take a picture with him, it's gonna make me look it's gonna make me look at you different. Like, yo, why are you that? Have that much admiration for another man like that? You smiling, cheesing, showing all 32. All 32 of your teeth. But then again, I'm, I'm be honest, I don't even know if that was her husband. I'm just, I'm just assuming that was her man because, well, they both look like they together. <laughs> never say no diddy ever again after doing something like that listen bro i understand being a fan of another grown man who raps or plays basketball or something but there's a limit all right there's a limit to how much of a fan the man that is toxic wants to receive wants to be catered to wants to be served the man that is healthy wants to serve acts of service okay wants to provide wants to chase wants to take initiative does the doing part so the woman can surrender into her divine femininity and receive so the woman should receive the man should do okay the man wants to serve only toxic men want to be served why because toxic men are usually insecure or very feminine because they came from a household where maybe they never had a mother and now they're looking for a mother in their new wife or partner because they want to be mother because they're so insecure, okay, they want to be served, or they're just deeply narcissistic or insecure and they need a woman that is convenient to them. If I was a gullible person, I would believe this, but I'm not no idiot, bro. This is some manipulation. This is just another manipulative tactic that women try to use intellectually, logically, to try to make you feel guilty about a woman being nurturing to you. I do believe the man should serve. I also believe the woman should serve. A woman is a help meet. From the beginning of time in the Bible, the woman was here to help the man. It's in her job description. Help meet. So I don't hear nothing about none of that bull crap. All right. The woman receives the man. Do yeah, the woman receives. Uh, you know what? I'm not even gonna make jokes about that. Yes, the woman receives, but the woman also gives in a different style. The woman gives in a nurturing way. She serves. Men provide this. Men serve by providing certain things, providing security, providing finances. Let's just say that's what a men's job is. Women provide, you know what I'm saying? The yams. You know what I'm saying? They cook, they clean. They comfort you when you when you when you when you ain't do, when you ain't feeling, you know, like you whatever confident or whatever. They hug you. They give too. That's the way they they give. They even help you with ideas. If you got a project you're working on, whatever, they can serve like that. There's a different ways for women to serve. Don't don't. That's some bull crap, bro. <laughs> that is some. Ain't nobody gonna believe. Actually, people are gonna believe that bull crap, and that's sad. Excuse me. I ain't mean to bother you, but I can't lie, you fine as fuck. So what's your name? Melissa. Melissa, nice to meet you, my name is Hubie. You out here shopping? Huh? Yeah. Is there no way to get your number? I have a boyfriend. You have a boyfriend? Yeah. For real? Mm -hmm. Are you serious right now? Yeah. Bruh. Damn. What's his name? Anthony. Anthony? Yeah. Oh, Alright. Well, I'm gonna let you be then. Mm. At least I, I, I tried to do it. Alright. <laughs> All right. You have a good one, right? Okay, you too. Have a good day.
YouTube look good, I ain't gonna lie. Bro got rejected so bad he just decided decided he's gonna start shopping for groceries. He ain't, he ain't know what he wanted because that's not what he was there for. <laughs> Nigga was confused. He was just looking at oh, what should I buy? Let's go ahead and bring out our next guy. Okay, come on, come on. Okay, so say your name, what you do, and give us a fun fact about you. I'm Ty. Uh, I'm a real estate agent, I'm a data analyst, and uh, I breed Frenchies. Okay, so we had a few ladies pop their balloons. Let's see why they pop their balloons. So, Chioma, why did you pop your balloon? Just not my type. Okay, what about him is not your type? I, I'm not really a huge fan of dreads. I'm not a huge fan of locks. Okay, okay, so you don't really like locks. What are your names anyway? So this is Chioma. It's Chioma. Eva. Nigel. Right, Eva. Now go ahead, go ahead. You said, what, okay. Why you pop yours? Because you, I don't know, you just didn't come in with confidence. You kind of came in like... Like it's good. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't like carry yourself with your head high. My bad. Yeah. Sure, but I do appreciate that though. What about you? It's just, you're not my type. I do like your tattoos. Yeah. Although I love your tattoos. Yeah. I think that's dope. I love your hair. I'm not feeling a ponytail though. This girl throwing me off. Okay, well, actually, so we had three women pop their balloons. First, I want to ask, are any of these women your type? As far as type, I mean... Yeah, would you date any of them? Like, seriously? Like, if you see them on this... I, I'll date y'all, yeah, for sure. Yeah, okay, so out of all three of them, would you? which one would you date if you had to choose? Choose one? Yeah, just one. Probably. Okay, why her? I had to choose one, right? Yeah, but what about her stood out? Just your physique, for real. Thought you cool people and shit, you got them, them real locks? Oh, shit, but... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. But we still have two women who didn't pop their balloons, so let's walk over and let's see which one. You want to ask them a question? All right. What's your ideal date? Like, yeah, what's your ideal date for sure? Uh, I like to go, like, uh, like improvs, you know, where you, like, see stand-up comedy live, drinks, you know, laughs, because I feel like laughter brings people closer, so, like, that's my style right there. You are island you? Yeah. What part? Girl, I'm from the Bahamas, Nassau. Nassau, uh, uh, 242. Uh, yeah, my frat brother, my frat brother's from over there. I know. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, okay. Are we making a little connection I here? Yeah. Yes. I'm an island you too. I'm an island you too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, what island? I'm Jamaican, African. Okay, nice. Nice. What part of Africa? Uh, West Africa. Uh, Gambia. Okay. I know where Senegal at? Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right in there. Okay, so do you want to ask him a question? Um, How old are you? Uh, I'm actually about to be 25. Uh, It'd be like that. Uh, I'm about to be 25 this year. Okay. I'm pretty sure you pop for your age, huh? Now, I don't care. Nobody say he winning. The, the best looking, the best looking woman. In my opinion, is the one that didn't pop the balloon was showing interest. So he cool. But my, my question is, if he was a known person that was making at least $5 million a year, would any of those women pop their balloons? The answer would be no. I'm going to answer for y'all. They disqualify him because of his height and because of his hairstyle and things like that. If he was making $5 million a year, if he was making $1 million a year, none of them would have popped their balloons. Not, not one of them. In fact, it would have been a 20 v. 1. You know what I'm saying? Where they all line up to try to get a date with him. You don't really know the woman you married. I'm from Atlanta. Right. If I'm playing for the Clippers, she might move with me. Mm -hmm. But I'm on the road three, four nights a week. I only got to deal with her for two nights at two a nights time. At a time. Wow. You dig what I'm saying? I got to deal with her two nights at a time during the week. You know how we keep her happy? Keep sending her to the mall. To the mall. That's Bodies. how you keep her quiet. That's why, that's why it can, it's okay. It's okay. I understand. It's a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I'll stay home with the kids. Right. <laughs> it's okay. You know why? Because she can shop in That's peace. Right. You ain't in her fucking yeah, ear. Peace. And mm. you on the road doing whatever you're doing. She ain't in your ear. Mm. Come home two days out that week. Play family. And then you retire and you got to deal with this shit 24-7. Play That's house. Tough, yeah, you playing tough. house. You on, your, you on your best behavior. How about that? That's the reality. So when you get, when you get to a place where, like I said, I, I was single. So I'm coming home with just my crib. Mm -hmm. so let's say you don't even have kids involved. Well, you got a long time girlfriend. Y'all y'all really got to get to know each other for real. Because mm. he's used to spending time with you, getting the fuck out of here. Right. Spending time with you, getting the fuck out of here. So how you going to keep her happy when your keep her happy button is send her to the mall. Right. And that half a million dollar check that you got last week, that ain't a half a million dollar check this week. So when you come home, man, y'all don't know who y'all are. That's like the most unwise decision to make as a man if you're making all that money. Why do y'all be marrying and then y'all be putting y'all finances in them type of situations? I can see wanting to have children and starting a family and things like that. 
But to marry on paper, I don't, I don't, I don't really get it. If you are quiet, but you keep your looks up, you keep your body on point, I want you to notice, I will not notice, I want you to pay attention to something. Watch how certain women will approach you. Watch how they will send you choosing signals. Women, I'm telling you right now, when you are attractive and you are very quiet and you carry yourself real, I'm telling you right now, most women associate quietness with so when a woman say, oh, that guy's so quiet, but he keeps to himself, he carries himself so right. He not drooling and chasing no girl and just looking at every ass he see. I'm telling you right now, for one, she's going to think that you got other women that you're seeing. And for two, she's going to think that you, you know what I'm saying? Quote, unquote, a freak. Listen, I don't know if I was never just attractive enough to be able to meet that standard, but I tried that quiet thing. The type of personality I have, I have the personality that's like very engaging, very social. I like to make people laugh all the time. I'm always trying to figure out how can I entertain people, right? That's my like natural personality. But I do have the ability to be chill and relaxed and just be like vibing in the cut, unnoticeable. You know what I'm saying? I tried that. I had a higher success rate just just being silly, being a goofball, you know, playing around, having fun, being personable than the quiet thing. I used to see people like him who are quiet and the women would flock to them. That never worked for me, bro. I tried that. I tried getting fresh. I tried being quiet. They never used to come, bro. But I know of other dudes that actually works for them. Every relationship I've been been in, my girlfriend ain't gonna mm -hmm. pay for anything. Ain't ain't help with no rent. Ain't pay. I I take over mm -hmm. her bills. You got a car? No, I got that. Bro. You got an apartment? Come I on, got man. That. Bro, I be getting so tired of these NFL players who get drafted to the league at age 18. They have been rich for so long. Like, as soon as they became an adult, from like childhood to adult, they were already childhood athletes, childhood stars. As soon as they became an adult, they had money. At least by age 20, they had money. They don't know what it's like to work a regular job and try to figure out how you're going to pay your rent. They don't know what it's like to be able to sleep in your car trying to figure out how you're going to be successful and how you're going to navigate this whole thing. Doing Uber and Uber Eats and, and freaking DoorDash to be able to just make enough payments to help your family or help yourself sleeping in a car. They don't know nothing about that. I hate when these type of people, people who got a whole bunch of money who ain't never experienced struggle a day in their life, maybe as when they was a youth, they probably experienced from their family members. But I, I, just, I, I just can't stand those type of men, bro. It, it's annoying, man. They have no concept of reality. They don't know. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what it's like to know. Like, dang, how am I going to eat tonight, bro? I used to do Uber. I used to work a job that was paying like five dollars an hour because it was like mainly tip based, right? It was slow season, so if you worked any type of tip job, especially in the hospitality, I used to work at the hotels and things like that. If you work a hotel in the hotel industry, you know there's certain seasons where a lot of customers come in and you make the most money as a bellman or as a any type of service you provide, whether it be in the restaurants or anything, right? I was making five dollars an hour as a grown man at like twenty eight years old at a at a hotel. I got paid every two weeks. My checks would only be like a hundred, two hundred dollars. So that would go quick. I used to sleep in my car. But in order to get sorry, in order to get food, I would drive Uber. I would clean my car out because I ain't wanted to stink. I would clean my car out, drive Uber for like two or three rides just to get enough money to buy some Wendy's, bro. I got the same desires as as any other man. All because these men are celebrities and are super rich. Don't they don't they don't got different desires. We all we all want a woman that's attractive that likes us back. Whenever he's in a relationship, he could pay for it. He don't know what it's like to go through what I went through. I used to desire that same thing. I can't just oh let me just I'll just pay for you. I, I'm just trying. I'm trying to get enough to eat some food for myself. And she not gonna come visit me. Hey, 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 come pull up at the crib. Well, what crib? Oh, the, uh, the Dodge Durango. She's not going to Netflix and chilling in Dodge Durango, my nigga. So, of course, every man would love that luxury to be able to pay for whatever and brag about it. It takes time for the average man to get to that point. That joint is so annoying, bro. The women will look at this and be like, see, you supposed to you supposed to pay for everything. This nigga's a millionaire. He don't even know he don't know nothing about business. He don't know nothing about struggling to figure out how to he just played a sport and was good at it. Working for home is not for the week. I really just had a customer to simply tell me to shut the up and let him talk. 
This man said, ma'am, shut the fuck up and let me talk. <laughs> I said, you know what? Christmas is coming up. My baby got shit that she want. I said, I'm talking. So you're going to let me talk. He said, no, you're going to shut the fuck up. Y'all, I just hung up. Because I almost damn near said, bitch, I don't know who the fuck you talking to, bitch, on this lovely Tuesday, ho. But you got me <laughs> the fuck you in this job. But I said, but instead, I just disconnect. I'm taking me a two minute breather. <laughs> That's hilarious. They be acting like, bitch, we got your address, your number. Like, bitch, who y'all be talking to? Mm. Talk about some, he's 71. Bitch, I don't give a fuck if you was 81, 91, 101. Bitch, you're not going to talk to me like that. I am not the one. People in general, that they don't understand when they get on TikTok or, and they share these type of things about their job, you understand it's public. Your job can come across that. Just like that TikTok therapist who lost her whatever she had going on. I think her licenses and all the type of things like that. When you go on TikTok, it's public. What y'all doing? You can lose your job just talking about that. One time in my life, I felt that. What was my purpose? <laughs> and sometimes you graduate out of high school. It says your boyfriend that never talks about his feelings unexpectedly, unexpectedly starts opening up. Dang, that's 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 crazy. And that's sad, bro. <laughs> Can you please explain to my husband that it is necessary to have various chapsticks in multiple locations? Because we're getting out the He looking at her like, yo, why are you recording this from the comfort of our bed? This is the only place that's private. This is as private as it gets. Why are you recording <laughs> and publicly posting this on social media? I'm in the comfort of my bed. What is you doing? Look at how he's staring at her, bro. He is disgusted. 100. If you want to know if you're getting manipulated, all you need to do is ask yourself, is this person acting like a non-intelligent person during this conversation? And if the answer is yes, then your answer is yes. See, the number one way a person will manipulate you is by playing dumb, okay? Dang. And, and I mean that very, very literally. They will be like, um, that that doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. Oh my God, you're trying to say so-and-so is so-and-so? Yeah. The biggest reason for this is because it's going to bring some type of anger, whether on your part or their part, okay? And what does anger do? It distracts. It, it, it's a distraction. Either they're going to act like they're so fed up in the conversation because it's so irrational, it's so unreasonable, or you're going to get upset because the conversation is literally actually so irrational and so unreasonable. So essentially, if they get mad, you're going to start focusing on them being mad. If you get mad, they're going to start focusing on you being mad. So guess what? Now y'all are talking about emotions. You're not even talking about the original issue at hand. And what does all of this do? It allows that person to never actually accept accountability or acknowledge what you would like to acknowledge. Bro, that is some rich advice right there, bro. It's crazy because that's something I've always known, especially when you're like, you know, the arguing with your woman or something like that. And it's like, yo, why what you hear what i'm saying and you still acting like you don't know of course it's manipulation most people know this but they don't allow themselves to just accept that what i want to know is why when i meet people do they never want to be my friend like i be meet people like oh you're cool you could be my homeboy and they be like nah you're not the friend type we go together give me kids like what why can't we just, why doesn't guys ever want to be my friend? Like platonic. I've never met a guy that just wants to be my friend. Unless he is like a friend of someone I used to date. That's the only time I get to have a guy friend. Like, what about me doesn't scream friend? Like, I just want to be friends, homeboys. Like, you and I are homeboys. Like, we are brothers. Like, platonic just friends like why do guys see me and be like nah we go together from this day forward like no we don't we're friends you literally know the answer to this you came on social media because you thought you looked cute you want to make a video stating the obvious you know the answer to it it's not rocket science if he was around a dude that was handsome and he said he just wanted to be friends and he he had no romantic interest in you but 
you were so attracted to him, you would be feeling some type of way. We're humans, all right? We're attracted to the opposite gender. That's just how it is. And if you're decent looking enough, people are going to be attracted to you. You know that because you'll be the same way with a guy that's very attractive that you find is very attractive. People these days. So that's why you always see the niggas who got daddies seem a little bit more cool, a little bit more collected than the niggas who cute like their mamas. How do we move towards a place where black men are so emotional? You can't. You, you can't, homie, because the only way you can not be emotional is you have to have a father who teaches you and trains your emotion. Other than that, your mama, you, you have to be emotional because that's the only time your mother whoops you. You got no spankings when your mother was calm and not emotional. So that's why you're emotional. You were disciplined with emotion. You weren't disciplined with logical rules to follow. You got spanked when you were frustrated. You didn't get spanked calmly and taught why you were being spanked. So you can't undo this, homie. What's done now, we can't undo this. We'll be dead and gone before we see a new group of men that don't respond like us. What, as a black man, what can I instill in a young black boy to make sure that he doesn't respond with emotion? Uh, treat his mother right and train your child's emotions. So you mean you have to spend time with your son. I mean, you gotta spend a lot of time with your son. He gonna be the cool nigga who friends follow him because he cool like his daddy. They gonna be cute like they mama, where they dress, where they look, but he gonna be cool like his daddy. He not God, so he's not the, he's not the determiner of what where there's hope or where there's not hope. There is hope. He's not the determiner where, where their hope is, where, where the hope is. I believe that if you're a man and you grew up with you know a single mother, um, and you want to become more masculine, you want to become in more control of your emotions, that's a mental decision. That's something that you have to work on personally. There's ways to achieve that. You could join a, a, you know, the military where there's a group of men. You could join a sports team like football, you know, was a group of men where there's a coach who's like a father figure who will lead you and guide you and discipline you when you're wrong. There's different groups or different parts of organizations you could be a part of where there's men, there's a brotherhood, that could teach you how to become more masculine. If you did not have that reinforcement growing up as a male, there's ways as an adult male to make the decision to become more masculine and um, not respond with so much emotions. And you know, my mom's side is related to Rita Marley as well. Uh, Rita Marley is Rita Anderson. Oh my God, we're related! Yeah. Yeah. So, so how, so, 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 how so my mom's dad is Kingsley R. Anderson. I don't, so how are you? You need to ask. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? I swear that your family is on the story now. What did they say? The story. What? That story. Hey. Yo, imagine being at a kickback and you see somebody you attract to of the opposite gender and you don't even realize that's your cousin, bro. This is why family trees are very important. I'm glad they're talking about that because, you know what I'm saying? It was like a kickback of random strangers, random people meeting up and stuff like that, for, or friends, mutuals. I'm, I'm just glad it ain't, it ain't happened where they was attracted to each other. They probably was. They probably got to talking. But boom, boom. I'm glad. They, this is why family reunion. This, but if you stole someone's man and then your man got stolen, stop crying. Literally stop crying. Go home and think about what you've done. If he was cheating on her with you, what makes you think? That he not going to cheat on you with somebody else. <laughs> All the, I need money. <laughs> I, that's why I have to stay off the internet. Because y'all will have me saying some shit. And then it's going to be everywhere. And I don't even feel like dealing with it. So that's why I just, please leave me the fuck alone. You, you, let me show y'all what I just went to go by. Hold on. I had to go by this. Um, this is a money counter. Because it is, it, 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 it. I, you know what? I ain't, I ain't coming my life to do this for y'all, and I ain't got no points to prove. Like, if y'all just bought a brand new car, I ain't even post a car. Like, let's not even do this. If I'm not mistaken, that's the female that Diddy used to date. That was a part of the City Girls, and she, I don't know if y'all remember, but she was getting like a seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollars stipend every single month from Diddy, allegedly. And when he lowered it down to like fifty or forty thousand dollars a month, or something like that. She said she's ready to leave him because that's not enough money for her to survive off of. And it went crazy on the internet, it went crazy all over all over social media. And uh, but now that Diddy's going through what he's going through, I guess them checks is cut off, and she ain't really getting the money like she like she, she was before. So now the internet's calling her broke, and that's how she's responding. We really don't care. 
fresh off his run in the NBA playoffs, a lot of people are talking about Anthony Edwards, but not for his game on the court. On social media, a brief clip of Edwards alongside girlfriend Janine Robel would make its rounds. Fans consider this notable because in addition to having a child with Edwards, Robel also has a child with rapper Chief Keith. Seeing the video of Edwards and Robel together has got some wondering why it seems like many black celebrities would choose a woman that has been with others in the industry before. One tweet that would receive over 10 million impressions on Twitter would read, I don't get it, bro. Black Americans become millionaires, and instead of finding a good woman who's educated and has morals, they wipe up a washed baddie who's also a single mom. That comment got social media riled up even more about the topic, with everyone offering their own thoughts and opinions. One user on social media would react, four years together, y'all gotta start worrying about your own situations. They seem to be having a grand old time. Water seeks its level. Some other users would engage in a back and forth with one asking, how do you know she's not a good woman who's educated with morals? The original poster would respond, she looked at Chief Keith and saw him fit to be a father. That tells me everything I need to know. One user would also point out that the two have been together for four years now. This would put Edwards at the age of 18 and Robel around 25 or 26 when they began dating. Sheesh. Back in December, Robel Sheesh. would confirm a pregnancy, even celebrating a baby shower earlier this year. High profile black male celebrities dating the same few Instagram models and influencers has been a discussion on social media for quite some He was 18 years old, so these women are smart. Like women who have, who have children with celebrities, they be, like, especially if they're a little bit older, they know the game. They've been in the game for a long time. They know how to get, they know how to trap men. So a lot of times you see these women who've been with, you know, had children with other rappers and things like that, get dudes, as soon as they turn 18 years old, get a rapper or get a, 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 um, a NBA superstar, NFL superstar when they're 18, 19 years old. Because the women already have a child with a celebrity. They know the game.